making a rock climbing wall volume. And guess on our first shape? The Pentagon. The first pattern that you cut out, take your time and really make sure that it's accurate. That is going to save you a lot of time as we go on in this process. Now if you did a good job on your measurements for the first one, you can then use that for your remaining four as a pattern. All you do is trace out the lines and then cut it. So we've cut out all of our pieces and then we added these boards to the back which are called strong backs. This angle is cut at a 41 degrees. so. It fits in that angle nice. All the joints are glued to make them a little bit stronger. Now if you see our, our edges aren't perfect here. And that's on purpose. We want to uh, practice uh, filling these. And that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to fill it with Bondo. But to make our job a little bit easier, we're going to first sand these down so we use less bondo and it goes a lot faster. So you can use two different tools to grind these edges down. You can use an angle grinder. This is a disc specially for carving wood and it is very aggressive. You actually, when you're just smoothing this out, you don't want to use this disc. You want to use what's called a flap disc. It has little pieces of sandpaper that are glued to a disc. And you're going to come in. Use both handles because that's going to help you get a little bit more stability with the tool instead of just using one. Use two, two so you can carve it. You're, you're making it look pretty. You're not just getting in there and roughing things up. You're making it look pretty. And the other thing that you can use is a belt sander. This is also aggressive. And for these angles like this, this is actually probably going to be the easiest. You're just going to come in. And you always want to look, after every pass, look at your workpiece to make sure you're not digging in in a spot that you're not supposed to be digging in. We're using the angle grinder here simply to be more familiar with the tool and how to use it in this application. So now that we got those joints smoothed down a little bit, we're going to go ahead and dust this off and then put some Bondo in there and it's going to go on nice and easy. After that Bondo is set up, then we'll come through and sand it. If we need to put some touch up on there, we'll put some touch up on there, but after that, it's going to be ready for paint. When you're using Bondo to fill cracks in your climbing wall or volumes, it's really important that you work it into the cracks and then lay it out as smooth as possible on the surface. This is going to reduce the grinding time or the sanding time later on. Now that it's all smoothed out, I'm going to take my really awesome snappy drill bit with the countersink on it and go ahead and put the set screw holes that will attach it to the climbing wall. You want to set these around the perimeter about every six inches. An angle grinder with a flap disc and finesse will make quick work 
of taking off those burrs that you just created or any imperfections that may still be on the volume. Now that your volume is all smoothed out, it's time to paint. Now I wasn't able to get video of painting the Pentagon, but really all volumes paint the same and I'm going to be able to show you the way that I paint volumes using this little guy right here. It's such a beaut. So here we go. Now there are many different things that you can use to cover your volumes with, but I like to keep it simple with some readily available paint. The deck over is a good choice. It comes pre-textured, but you can also use other paints. I like to use the Bare Paint Plus Primer in flat, and I will talk a little bit about that here in a minute. If you're going with the untextured paint, you also need to add this. Okay, this is a sand additive to your paint. I'll show you how to do that here in a little bit. But this right here is key. This is a water-based clear coat. And if you are going with just a regular paint here, you need to have this as a finish coat. Once you have all your supplies out, let's go ahead and start painting. I like to use a two inch roller depending on the size of the volume that I'm making. After you have that paint on there, go ahead and sprinkle on the sand or your texture. It is super important to get this on while the paint is still wet, otherwise it's not going to stick to anything. It's okay if it's not perfectly smooth when we go over it again with the second and sometimes a third coat of paint, it'll actually smooth out fairly well. If you were to just leave this texture on the surface like this, it would be really sharp and it would start to slough off over time. By going over it with a second coat of paint, it helps seal it in and it smooths it out a little bit, which I know is a, sounds a little counterintuitive, but it actually makes a really nice texture, something that's gritty that you can smear onto, but it's not going to cut you up if you slide across it. Once you have the paint and texture exactly how you want it, it's time to go ahead and put the sealer on it. This is what's going to allow it to last a really long time. It's going to help it clean up well and it just really makes it a good looking finished volume. Now I use either a satin or a matte clear coat and it's important to get a water based here I haven't had any luck at all with oil-based or anything other than water-based. That's just my experience. Um, the water-based tends to hold up a lot better and clean off better. I hope that you found this video informative. I'd love to hear what you guys think down in the comments below. Also, if you did enjoy this video, please let me know by hitting the thumbs up button. And also, if you're new here, hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you right here next time on Climber Dad.